Good morning. Today is the 9th of Tevet, the 21st of December. And we're continuing, t- continuing with a sh- short piece that the Tzemach Tzedek is commenting on. And we talked yesterday about the uh, reason, the reason being the mother bird, and the causes, the effects, sorry, the, the effects being the, uh, the chicks and the eggs. And so this represents the state of things in the world, that there is reasons, causes, and effects. And these reasons and causes, like we said with tzitzis, they come from God's mind, as it were. And he, has, he has reasons for what he does. And now he says like this, Ubizman uh, Ubizman Shebetam the fourth line. So in the English we're in uh, line nine. In, in the time of the temple. Yeah, I got it. Hey, how are you? We saw you on on a television show called Unicorns or something. <laughs> um, so in the time that the temple existed, stood in Jerusalem, Hayakayam so, in the time of the uh, temple, the reasons came down from above. Meaning, the reasons were in our world. The causes were in our world. It's as if God's mind was revealed. And so, a prophet, somebody who was a prophet, would experience this as a command to go and do something. That was accessible only to a, a Navi? Is that what you're basically saying? A prophet a- would, would be sensitive enough to understand the reason as a command. Not everyone. Not everyone no. understood it, but there were many, many there people many who did. Prophets. Yeah, yeah. Right. There were many 600,000 yeah, prophets, yeah, right, right, 600,000 right, right. prophetesses, yeah. there were many people. And even less than prophet. Prophecy is, is actually getting a command. Like, you're commanded the way the Moshe Rabbeinu was commanded. That's a very high level of certainty. Yeah. Like, Abraham was commanded to go because take a, his son. Yeah. Most people, because the reason was revealed, the reason was here in this world, so most people would experience it as what we call Ruach HaKodesh, the, the Divine Spirit. And so the Divine Spirit would be like, they would come to the temple. When the temple was in the world, he means it also that it wasn't just through the temple. You actually had to come. Was it second also? Yeah. Yeah. Second yeah, temple, right. there was no prophecy, but right. there still was divine was spirit. Okay. Okay. And so even, even regular people had a very good uh, grasp of what God wanted from them. It, it's like that the reason is revealed. The mother chick is on the birds. The cause and effect are related. Meaning, you know why this is happening. You see what's going on. It's not like today that we have a feeling that, you know, the most common thing we say is, we don't know. We don't understand Hashem's mind. It was a big chiddush for them to hear from Isaiah, that my thoughts are not your thoughts. Because in that time, it seemed to be very similar. They saw it. But that was a chiddush. I never... So now Isaiah was preparing them either for one of two things. I don't remember where this prophecy is exactly spoken, but it's one of two things. Either he's preparing them for the time there won't be, won't be a temple, or he's also, like many things that Isaiah does, he says, what you think you know is not everything. So it's not that what you're seeing is wrong. It's not that you're seeing something that's incorrect, but it's limited. It's only a limited grasp of what Hashem is thinking, what He wants. So at that time, it was very easy to, 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 to know what God wanted. Because the higher supernal mother, and here we're saying the mother is the causes, was not in exile. And you saw how she gives birth to the, to the effects. You saw how they were connected. You saw the connection. It was like giving birth to something. But from when the temple was destroyed. And then what we call the Shekhinah, there's a higher Shekhinah, lower Shekhinah. Here the higher Shekhinah is the mother, the cause. So the Shekhinah, which is called the Sukkah of David, the, uh, I guess, uh, booth of David, 
descends lower and lower, and it is engarbed in materiality. Meaning that how do people look for the reasons for what happens in the world today? They give material reasons. This happened because of this. This happened because of that. The highest up they'll go <coughs> is they'll say, oh, you know why this and this happened? It's all about money. Or they'll say something about ridiculous dying. like, uh, like um, this happened because uh, like the Odyssey is like that. She'll <laughs> shela Look for the woman. It's because of a woman or something like that. Really, what they're saying, search for the woman, and search for the supernal mother, try to figure out what Hashem's reason is. That's the real woman. That's the <coughs> higher, the higher Shekhinah. But from the time the temple was destroyed, we don't see this anymore. We don't see the reasons for what happens, and we don't see what we need to do either because of that. Again, in the time of the temple, they knew what to do. Even simple people, in general terms, knew what they were expected to do. The uh, world was, was much more structured, much more clear. But now it's not. <clears throat> and again, it's engarbed. The reasons, it's not that the reason doesn't exist, but the, only, the most you'll say is, is because of some material reason. Um, I, why am I going there? Because they have some, something I need to, to, to purchase. That's why you think you're going. This is a famous uh, story from uh, the Baal Shem Tov. I don't remember if it was from the Baal Shem Tov or not, but it fits that uh, they were traveling on, on the wagon to some, some place, let's say to Leipzig. Leipzig was where all the fairs were and still are. So they, uh, it's amazing they were able to retain that after World War I and II. Like nothing changed. It's, yeah, it's we, all the same thing. We were just there. It's all the same thing. So <clears throat> they were traveling, and uh, there was a, 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 a merchant that was with him, taking a, taking a ride with him. And so the merchant said, we're all going to Leipzig. So the Baal Shem Tov says, it happens to be that we are all going to Leipzig, but for very, very different reasons. He says, what do you mean? He says, the horse is going because it thinks that it's going to get sugar when we get to Leipzig. The wagon has no choice, it's just hitched to the horse. You're going because you want to do some business there. And, I, and the real reason we're going is why I'm going. Because <laughs> I have a completely different reason why I'm going. He's going to do some uh, mitzvah, something there. So it says the world is, is like this, that most people, what do they see? They see the material cause, all they see, and, 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 and that's the most important cause. So he says also, So he says the same thing happened to Torah. The reason for Torah, meaning teaching something, is because the preacher, the teacher, needs parnasa, he needs a livelihood. <laughs> that, that's why, it's an incredible thing, but this is what's happened to Torah over the years. That from being something that we say about Moshe Rabbeinu, that, he, what, that you should teach for free because he taught for free. For 40 years he taught for free. He didn't, he didn't ask for anything for, for <clears throat> sorry, from anyone. You should also. To the point where today nobody's even willing to learn for free. <laughs> I'm not talking about teach for free. That's gone a long time ago. That, that was gone 500 years ago already. Actually, even, even earlier thousand years ago. But now, from 500 years ago, it's even that if you want somebody to learn, you have to pay them. By the way, it's, a, it's no different in the secular world. If you want good people to come to your university, you have to pay them a scholarship. You have to pay them a stipend if you, if you want them to do a graduate degree. It's, it's how the world is now. I'm not comparing Torah to secular knowledge. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's the same everywhere. That the causes have fallen down into the material. Now, any, anything anyone does is because of a material need. Even when they're doing something spiritual. That's what he's saying. You can't fight it. This is, the, this is what exile is. And so you're looking for someone who's going to be like Moshe Rabbeinu, do everything for free and be idealistic. You won't find that. If you do, then we have to discuss why, why that's possible. And we'll do that, God willing, tomorrow. You mean to do that now is almost like a serious method, it was normal back then. Right. Back then it was yeah. there.